So this is Beyond Brave. We're in a live workshop downstairs, banging and crashing. Around me are some of my apprentices doing the first year of the 5357. And the end practical assessment requires us to install a plastic conduit lighting circuit, two-way switching of one light, and this is our practice job in order to get there. We're gonna run through some of the tests that we're gonna carry out in this video presentation, but first of all, I'm gonna question my learners before we carry out that testing procedure. So in nice, loud voices, let's start over here. Joe, name the first dead test that we're gonna carry out. Continuity of CPC. We are. Which test will we include at the same time? Polarity. We will do. What does R1 stand for, please? Resistance of the light. Okay, R2. Resistance of CPC. As well as doing the continuity of CPC test in the first test, what other tests will we include at the same time? Polarity. We will include the polarity test. And clear the banging and crashing. This is live in the workshop. Of all the readings I get during my continuity test, which one will we record, Rob? The highest. We are, and we expect that to be somewhere in circuit, logically in a radial circuit at the end. However, depending on how we've wired our CPCs, we don't know where that reading's going to be. So we're gonna do that test in the next part of our presentation in order that my learners can see and review it on the video. If it helps you do your 5357s, so all well and good, but let's go for that first test. So a subtle difference from some of the video presentations I've done before, we aren't using the crocodile link to link our line to our earth bar where our CPC is connected. We've actually physically put the line conductor into the earth bar where the CPC is connected in order that makes a solid link. We're finding that our links at college are becoming a bit uh, unpredictable on our resistance reading. So we've linked those in the consumer unit, slightly different than before. And we go to each point in circuit in order to measure the continuity of CPC. We're also gonna include the polarity test at the same time. So we're gonna operate the switches. Unlike some of my other video presentations, presentations, we're not an all insulated system. So here I've got a metal back box and a metal switch, and those are exposed conductive parts, and I need to prove they're connected to the CPC, not necessarily the earth terminal at the back where the CPCs are connected. I wanna know the metal box and the metal frames are connected to the CPC, and that's really important to me in this part of the test. So we've set up our meter, so we've exactly the same, it's just a slightly different ohm meter, and I thought I'd use this one. Orange scale as before is the ohms and the red scale is the mega ohms. We're gonna do both tests in this video presentation. I've linked together my leads. I've removed the resistance of the leads by pressing the test button and we're ready to perform the test. So linked in the consumer unit, instrument zeroed out, we're ready to do our continuity test. So first of all, we're gonna go up here to our baton lamp holder. We've gotta go in with our probes. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. I might need some help with the switches. I'm gonna connect onto my Line conductor and my CPC, it doesn't matter which way around the leads go, but just so I don't get any comments below, let's put the red one on the brown, okay? So lead goes on there and then onto my CPCs and I look at the instrument itself and nothing has happened. Joe, do you wanna operate switch number one for me? Yeah. We can now see we have a reading of 0 0.03. Operate number switch number two for me, please. And now our circuit has gone off. Operate switch number one again for me, please. So 0 0.04, operate switch number two again for us, please. Okay, so we can turn it on from any point, so just grab a switch and turn it on for us, Joe. Indecision there, didn't matter which one you chose, and you're in indecision. So we've got our highest reading that we saw on there was 0 0.04. We've proved, therefore, the CPC gets up to here, it's a fully insulated system, but we've also proved that the, the line conductor is switched by the two two-way switches, and we went between the switches in the switching sequence. We didn't operate one switch and then operate the others, we switched between them. It doesn't matter whether we leave them on or off, we've left them on at the moment, and we're gonna drop down now to the first two-way switch. So I'm gonna probe into the back of the light switch itself, I'm gonna go into the common terminal, and I'm gonna go onto the CPC connection in the back of the box, and I've got a reading of 0.01. It's important that I go now to the exposed conductive part, going to the back of the box itself, 0 0.01, and I'm going to the front chassis as well. So there's some embossed right in here where it's actually, actually it's been scored away, it's engraved, not embossed. So we'll go with that, we'll go in there, we'll go on there, and again, back into the common terminal of the switch itself. So we've got onto there and the common terminal, and we've got a reading of 0 0.01. Super important to me that we proved it to the CPC terminal in the back. Pretty much irrelevant from the point of view that I needed to prove the metal back box and the metal front plate are connected to the CPC. My highest reading at the moment is still 0.04. I repeat the same process over here. So I come round, I'm gonna go into the common terminal and I'm gonna go onto the back box. Let's see if we can get a reading. and we get a reading of 0.05, which is now my highest reading. The back box itself, 
0.05 and then the front metal work as well if I go into a slightly different position the front metal work again and I've got a reading of 0.05 which is the highest reading currently in circuit doesn't matter whether I've left these switches on or off because we can do the insulation resistance test as required by AM2 and AM2S in the next stage remember the highest reading we checked it at the light fitting and we operated the switches only at the light fitting we need to know that comes on and off and we then proved that the exposed conductive part of the metal back box and the metal front plate were connected to the CPC we also did prove it onto the actual terminal in the back but for me that's almost irrelevant if the metal work isn't connected to the CPC and that's what we did in that part of the test. So we're getting ready to carry out the next test in the test sequence. We've done the continuity of CPC and we've included polarity at the same time. The next test we're carrying out is? Insulation resistance. It is. Um, we're going to pass how many volts through the circuit? 500 volts. And is that AC or DC? That's DC. DC. The smallest acceptable value of insulation resistance for an existing installation is how many? One mega. One mega. What does mega stand for? It does stand for a million. And we know for a brand new circuit, the insulation resistance shouldn't fall below? 20 mega ohms. We've got a brand new installation here. There's some things that we've confirmed have happened. We've put the covers back on the switches, so all covers are on, including the light. There's no load in circuit, so there's no lamp in circuit. And for us, we know there's sensitive electronic components in RCDs. We've got an RCCB in this case. So we've got that in the off position. And as we don't know whether the electronic components are at the top of it or the bottom of it, even though we know a circuit breaker doesn't have any electronic components, we've left that off as well, because when we do the test, the insulation resistance test will go out, but it'll also go down. So if it came down through the break of the voltage, it could damage electronic components if they were at the bottom of the RCCB. We've set our instrument up at 500 volts in the red scale on mega ohms, and there is no order in which to do this, even not a Gary order. So it doesn't matter which sequence we do the following in. We're gonna connect, first of all, to the earth bar for me and the top of the breaker itself. I try and keep my hands out the way and we press and hold our test button. And that's a reading greater than the machine can read. So plus 1000 mega ohms. I move across now to the neutral bar. So neutral and earth bar where the CPC is connected. Same reading again. I take it off. This is the one that I usually fuff when I'm uh, doing it on my own. So this never stays on in position. So as I'm doing this pretty live in the workshop, so we've got it held on and go there. And we're greater than the machine can read. So we've done the first sequence. For 5357, the AM2 and AM2S, they'd like you to do your insulation resistance test this way, where there's two-way or two-way and intermediate switching. I've done the test once. I can't remember where I left it on or off. I go to the switch. I operate the switch, I repeat all three again. So we go back onto the, the earth bar, top of the breaker itself, press and test. Across to the neutral bar, press and test. And across here, the one that always catches me out, will it hold? Just about, yep. And we go again. Okay, we walk back out into the installation, we bypass the first switch we operate, we go to the second switch, we operate that, we repeat the sequence again. Okay, greater than the machine can read. Greater than the machine can read. Pop it across, last chance for it to fall off in front of everybody. Okay. Greater than the machine can read. Any assessment you do in your apprenticeship framework will have two-way or two-way and intermediate switching in it. And when you're doing the insulation resistance test, it's important you carry out that test correctly. So I did the test in the consumer unit of the lighting circuit. There is only one circuit in here and it is the lighting circuit. I did the insulation resistance test. I operated the switch. I did it again, operated the switch, meaning in this case, I did the test three times for insulation resistance. We hope this semi-live video with all the noise in the background and my learners surrounding me